Hey everyone, this is Jennifer. I am going to sit down and flip through my completed February pages and I have my brand new Corvective paper inserts printed for March and something from Lindsay Scribbles and I'm gonna be moving things over for the new month. So I thought we could chat about that as well. So let's talk about um, February 1st. And I do have a couple of planner conf confessions to make. So if you have been watching my videos for the past, I don't know, 10 weeks, I have been saying every week that I have been committed to this Corfective Paper week on one page insert for the first six months of 2024. Looking at this, it is beautiful. I love it and it might pull me back in as I'm just sitting here talking and flipping through the pages. Um, but let's finish where I ended this insert because yes, I'm eating my words and I did pick up a new weekly insert. So here's where we're at. This is the current week. And I even considered like staying in this until the end of March. That way all of first quarter would be in here it's because here's the deal. I am on a mission to archive my traveler's notebook inserts for the first time. I have January dailies in here and obviously my goal was to just have two of these weekly booklets at the end of the year. So if I switched inserts, which I did, I kind of told myself, that's fine, Jennifer, you can switch inserts, but that means you're going to backfill the past eight weeks. Is that right? Yes, the past eight weeks. Because then one, it puts some resistance between me and just switching weekly inserts all the time, even though there are many times I wanna switch often. So the resistance is good because I don't really enjoy backfilling pages. However, for this, I thought it was worth it because um, when I saw this week on one page, horizontal from Perfective Paper, I fell in love and I wanted to try it really, really bad. And here's the truth. I had been already towards the end of January, not, uh, I don't want to say love. I was bored, I guess, with this insert. So when I saw this, I jumped on it and I knew if I, if I picked it up and printed it and put it in here, I had to commit to filling, backfilling those eight weeks because at the end of the year, then I'll have this to archive instead of this. So that's where we're at with the weekly. And I also had another little bit of a planner revelation this month, which I kind of talked about, I think, in a different video. Planner boredom is real, for sure. Um, so I have figured out that when I have all of my pages in every single section and my Erin Condren planner all perfectly up to date, then I'm like, I have nothing to do. And I sit down and I wanna write and I wanna fill things out and I wanna plan and I can't because <laughs> everything's up to date. Such a problem to have, right? I was talking to my friend about this the other day. So anyway, that was a revelation that I had and I think it's kind of funny. So I thought I'd share it with you, but I'm being honest here. So here we are with a new weekly after I said that I would not backfill. I totally did. All right, let's move on to the daily pages. So I was perfectly content in this day on two pages from Corfective Paper for February. Um, for the most part, I wasn't feeling an itch to move. I was loving the pages. 
it gives me room for my schedule over here and then journaling and gratitude over here. I love how it looks with pictures and just little pops of Planner Kate stickers. So I'll flip through this. So you can kind of see how I did things. Seeing this reminds me though, I've started March dailies and I haven't pulled out my wacky holidays. So we might have to do that too here in a minute. I even started adding some trackers here and there and trying those out. I was still at the beginning of the month pretty much obsessed with these circle day of the week stickers. Really enjoying adding pictures of my planner because that kind of helps me with my planner contentment because it reminds me how much I love this little setup. This was the only day that I must have been in a huge journaling mood and I ran out of room. I did put two pictures on this spread, so that took up room, but I ran out of room, so I just washi taped in a piece of lined paper and finished up the day on that. And then I discovered that these Planner Kate stickers fit so nicely up here, so I think I finished the rest of the month with those, um, but more of the same. And I also came to terms with the fact that not everything was going to be completely full. Like if I got down what I wanted for my journaling or gratitude and the page wasn't full, that was okay. And looking back, it's still not bothering me. It's totally, totally an okay thing. So going strong here. And there were days I didn't feel like journaling. And I've come to terms with that as well. Okay, so towards the end of February, I started thinking about what I wanted to do for my dailies because the dailies are something that I said I could change as often as I wanted. I thought that would give me something a little project to do or an out when I was feeling bored to just switch my dailies. But ironically, I haven't really been switching my dailies. I've been in a daily consistently for an entire month, so they're easy to archive. So I started thinking about that, which is why these last few pages, I kind of, on February, I kind of fell off the rails here because I found what I wanted to use for March, but I was a little bit afraid because it was so different than what I'm used to. And I'll show you, show that to you, but I tried them out. I just printed like two pages to try them out and make sure that they were what I wanted because I really do like having at least a month's worth of dailies. Well, I don't know if this is gonna fit. This is my archive binder from the Traveler's Company. There we go. Okay, so super satisfying for my daily binder here. I have January and February in here. Okay, so here's what I decided to try. I printed off just a four millimeter grid from Lindsay Scribble's The Ghosting Pen. And I tried it for February 28th and the 29th and I thought, yes, this is it. I'm really enjoying this. I like the grid because it's easier to set up graphs versus the lined inserts that I've been using. And I also have pretty small handwriting. So this grid size is like perfection for my natural handwriting without me purposely trying to make it larger or smaller to fill the space. So I have been enjoying that. 
in the past, when I have something, and I've tried many <laughs> over the years, something that's open like this, um, it has never worked. I have really liked the pre-printed sections like a schedule section and a to-do section and everything just kind of done for me. But I have been embracing this and knowing that some days like my to-do list is going to be shorter than others and now I'm not confined to any sort of space really. And if I get to a page, let's just say... I only take up like this much room for a day. I could put the next day down here and not have any white space at all. I could just continuously fill the page. The other thing is I don't feel like I have to fill a page up for a specific day. I became okay with that in my other daily insert, as I told you, but this, like the pressure of writing not enough or too much is completely gone because it is just like a continuous fill. I also printed these out so that I have more than a month's worth, I think. It depends again on how much I journal a day, but so far if I'm just sticking with basically a page per day, I could be in this for some time. Now, that being said, you know, <laughs> It depends on if I get bored with this daily insert at some point and want to switch out. But for right now, this is what I'm using. I did print out a couple pictures this morning because I realized I hadn't been doing that in this daily insert. And one of the things that I always do is print out the Planner Kate challenge and put it on the front of my daily insert. So I'm going to do that real quick. And then let's look at these. I have a picture of both of these new inserts. Again, this is what kind of helps me stay content is looking at these and remembering that feeling of how much I loved the new insert. I know that seems silly, but my traveler's notebook specifically gives me all the feels. It's a real thing. So um, I printed these out kind of not knowing Looks like I picked the perfect size, 1.4 inches wide, because I do split this column in two. So I think I'll put one of these down. On this for today, as I'm filming this, this is March 2nd. And then we'll go ahead and, well, let's see, will this fit here? Probably not. I'm gonna save these two little pictures for a future day in here. Okay, so that is the daily insert. Um, going back, the other thing that has changed for March are my lists and my habit trackers. So I did print off more of those same four millimeter grids for this little back section here. So I have a temporary notes section and a permanent notes section. Um, I thought that I would really like the Traveler's Company bound lined booklets, but I have found that I really prefer this. So that's why I switched that out. I still have my Traveler's Company um, lined insert from previous videos, and if I need to switch back to that, I can. I'm not throwing that away. But I did move my habit trackers back in here where they're just printed on paper. I am not doing the sticker paper on the Traveler's Company booklets at this point. Um, I did also add this new insert from Perfective Paper as part of my monthly review section and I'm going to have a video up. I don't know if that will go up before this video or not so 
Um, I'm kind of playing around with my schedule a little bit, but this was all about um, how I use gratitude in my planner to help with anxiety. I've had a couple of really bad anxious days the past week or so, so that was well-timed, but everything else is the same. So I'm still loving my month on one page. I switched my trackers back to this section here on printed paper. So I have this going as a tracker, and then this is my adulting log. And then we have the new horizontal weekly, which I am just obsessed with. I think it looks so neat and clean. And a lot of times I don't have a whole lot of time specific appointments going on. I do not put my work plans here because that would take up a lot of room, but really enjoying that. And then we have the dailies that I showed you as my next section. My YouTube section next, so maybe I'll film a separate video on how I track that, but there's a look at January. It's another Crefective paper insert. And then my last section are those two note, really thin note sections for temporary and permanent notes. I think the reason, or at least one of the reasons I really like this option better than the Traveler's Company insert is that the Traveler's Company insert is pretty thick in comparison to this. And I only really need a few temporary notes pages because when I run out, I'm gonna toss them anyway and then just refill them. So I like the ability to just carry a few of those. All right, guys, I think, I think that's the plan for March. You'll have to let me know um, what you think. Do you find yourself in the same sort of situations with your planner where everything's up to date? and then you get bored and you always feel like you sort of need some little project to be working on. Surely I'm not alone, right? Surely. All right, guys, thank you so much and I'll see you back next time. Mm -hmm.